Good afternoon. Thanks for being here today. Sorry for the delay. Y'all all know how it is uh, here in Washington. Um, this is an important hearing, and in the wake of, of the data breach of the Office of Personal Management, the committee remains deeply concerned with the federal government's plan to address cybersecurity. This do as I say, not as I do mentality is an affront to the American people and leaves our federal agencies and the PII of millions at risk. Today's hearing is the first in a series of hearings the Subcommittee on Information Technology will hold focus on the cybersecurity posture of federal agencies. This means not only compliance with FISMA, but also responding to the recommendations of an agency's Inspector General as well as the GAO. I'm proud to hold this hearing jointly with Chairwoman Loomis, Ranking Member Lawrence, and the Subcommittee of Interior, and I'm always thankful for Ranking Member Kelly and the bipartisan way we have been able to approach cybersecurity and other issues on this subcommittee. The first hearing this committee held on the recent OPM data breach, I advised agency CIOs across the federal government to pull out their past IG reports and get to work on addressing the vulnerabilities that have been identified. Ms. Burns, I hope you have come here today with a concrete plan to address vulnerabilities in DOI's systems um, pointed out by the IG and others. The Department of Interior Inspector General recently conducted penetration tests of publicly accessible computer systems and websites operated by DOI bureaus. What they found is alarming and is largely what brings us here today. The IG found nearly 3,000 critical and high-risk vulnerabilities in hundreds of publicly accessible computers operated by DOI bureaus. Let me repeat that number, 3,000. Even more concerning, the IG found that because DOI did not segment its publicly accessible systems from its internal systems, hackers could exploit these vulnerabilities to access internal and non-public DOI computer networks. DOI's internal networks support mission-critical operations and contain highly sensitive data. Not segmenting the public and the internal networks from each other is a failure of basic cybersecurity best practices. We need and deserve better from federal agencies and those in charge of securing our digital assets. There's too much at risk not to. In addition, DOI hosted the OPM personal file database that was breached and resulted in 4.2 million former and current federal employees having their personal and private information stolen. Since then, Director Archuleta has stepped down, and rightfully so. Several questions about DOI's role in the breach remain unanswered, including whether or not other agencies may have been compromised, how many breaches exactly took place at DOI, and whether or not the attackers are still in the system. Both subcommittees look forward to today to having some of those questions answered. In closing, it is no secret the federal agencies have a long way to go to improve their cybersecurity posture. We have years and years of reports highlighting the vulnerabilities and actions of federal agencies. And we also have years and years of recommendations from IGs, GAO, and experts in and out of the government on how to address these vulnerabilities. Simply put, we know what needs to be done. We just need to do it. We need strong and capable leaders in place across the federal government to upgrade IT systems and shore up the current sorry state of cybersecurity at federal agencies. We need leaders who will listen to the recommendations of their IGs and others and take appropriate corrective actions based on those recommendations. The status quo is unacceptable. We need leaders who can put a solid plan in place and then execute it. I hope we have that type of leadership in place at DOI. I welcome the witnesses and look forward to their testimony. And now I would like to recognize my friend and the ranking member, Ms. Kelly of Illinois.